The Electric Cinema is the oldest cinema in the UK. It first opened in 1909 and it's been through many name changes since then and many rebuilds as the industry's changed over the years. But it's now a two screen independently owned cinema and we show a mixture of mainstream films and smaller independent films and some foreign films. And what makes us different, I guess, uh, from other cinemas is that we like to focus on the atmosphere in the building and we like to have staff that are very knowledgeable about the films and the kind of things that we do. And then we have a bar and we also have text waiter service to sofas so we actually have sofas at the back of the screen and you can send a text message from there and have the bar deliver whatever you want during the film. Originally I started out as a musician, then became a filmmaker and then became someone who wrote music for film. And then I worked for Sega for a while, I set up my own company and I had it in my own house and I was writing music for Sega and then started writing music for other TV companies like the BBC and Channel 4 and so on. Um, and I needed some better business premises. Looking around for over a year or so, suddenly this cinema appeared and it was on an auction website and it was going quite cheap, but it was in a very derelict condition. Now, when I was a kid, I'd gone on tour with bands and in between going on tour, I'd learned to become a builder because my stepdad used to do up listed buildings. So I was used to walking into a rundown building and thinking, oh, well, that looks worse than it is, you know, that room's going to cost a few thousand pounds to fix and that room's going to cost that many thousand pounds to fix. So I wasn't scared of it. So I decided to take it on and the idea was to have my recording studio in the one screen and then run the cinema downstairs just for a couple of days a week, um, just because I thought it'd be a shame to see it shut. And I was going to employ somebody else to run it. In the end, the cinema really took off and it took a year or two for it to happen but eventually we ended up running uh, seven days a week and more and more people just started coming and they loved the cinema and we just got so much feedback about how great it was. In the end we had to move the recording studio into the basement and reopen the second screen because we just had uh, so many customers. Often people contact us on Facebook and Twitter and say, oh, please, can you show such and such? So, for example, we weren't going to show the last Twilight film because the one before we thought was really awful. But we had so many requests via Facebook and Twitter, we relented and showed it, and it's been massively popular. That normally happens the other way around. Normally what it is is smaller films get a bit of word of mouth behind them and people contact us and go, oh, can you show this film? It looks really, really interesting. Um, and then we know that there's an audience for it, so we put it on. So social networking is enormously important for our business and it's something that separates us, again, from the multiplexes. Maybe because the business has been set up for the right reason, you know, maybe because the people that work here are working here because they really love it. You know, when we have applications for jobs, we're massively oversubscribed and it, and it is partly down to the current, you know, economic conditions and people, more people being unemployed. But it's also down to the fact that people can see that it's run by people who really care. Our audience is quite broad. We have people that might come to see mainstream films like Harry Potter and so on, and they just want to sit on the sofa and have a drink, and they find that novel and they, they like it. And then we have other people that are into the kind of uh, more artier films, and they're coming here because we may be showing a film that's not on anywhere else. And we'll have young people and old people, and it, it, it's broad, actually, broader than I ever thought it would be. And I think it's Im important because the UK and America and other parts of Europe to a lesser extent are becoming homogenised in terms of the high street. So the businesses are very similar from one town to the next. So for example you could go to Manchester and you could go on the high street and it's almost identical to a high street in Liverpool or Leeds. Um, because there are so many chain businesses, independent businesses are really important because they give a city and a place its identity because you can't go to the electric anywhere else, you can only go to it in Birmingham. It's, this is a completely unique space, whereas, you know, subways and top shops and so on, and Gap is just the same the world over. So I think that's one of the reasons it's important. And I think the other thing you've got to think about in terms of cinema being important is that it's a community. People do it for community reasons. Obviously, you could watch a DVD at home, you know, people have got big screen TVs now, so they can come close to replicating um, at least a large screen experience. 
And what they can't do is replicate sitting in a room with a bunch of people they don't know and all laughing at the same time or all feel, feeling sad at the same time and just for the fact that they're going out. So the combination of those things means that actually cinema, at least independent cinema, is on the rise and has been on the rise for, for the last sort of at least probably 10 years.